What is up guys, Mr. The Reverts here, welcome back to the channel. Fireteam Dirty Bomb is one of the most hectic and crazy chaotic combative game modes I've ever came across in my 10 years of playing Call of Duty. I think Treyarch really has something special here with this game mode, but today I want to let you guys know some tips that I picked up on from playing the game mode over the weekend, my overall thoughts, and so much more. Now before we get started, I just want to mention I will definitely do an updated video when the full game releases coming next month, but for now, here are some general tips and advice for the game mode. First off, we're going to be looking at your loadout. Now secondary weapons can pretty much be up in the air, whatever you want to use. However, for Fireteam Dirty Bomb, you either want to run a rocket launcher or the combat knife. And the reason why you want to use the combat knife is because it's going to one hit melee kill anyone, including if they have full health, full armor. Whatever it's at, the combat knife will always one hit melee kill. So when the dirty bomb is inside of a room, everyone's gonna be dropping onto that location. They're fully automatic assault rifles, submachine guns, LMGs, whatever they're using. They do not stand a chance against the combat knife at close range. The rocket launcher is gonna be very useful in case the enemy team calls in chopper gunners or use the attack helicopter. Just any vehicles in the game, the rocket launcher is gonna be very deadly to use against those. Now for your tactical slots, I highly recommend using a smoke grenade over anything else as this will also help you to arm the bomb and it's also going to give you additional cover in case the dirty bomb is in somewhat of an open area. I've had this happen to me so many times. The smoke grenade has saved my life many many times when I'm trying to arm the bomb. So same thing for your lethals, highly recommend using the molotov over anything else because if you can throw this onto the bomb location and if somebody on the enemy teams are trying to defuse the bomb or even arm it, you can cover the area with flames that will, you know, not allow the enemy teams to go near that area for a few seconds. And again, I think this is better than all the other grenades and the C4 and the lethal slots. For the field upgrades, now this is where you and the team need to decide what roles you guys want to run. So far, I've came up with three roles and they are objective, meaning the player will always try and arm the bomb, collect as much uranium as possible, etc. Defensive, meaning the player's main job is to defend the perimeter, maybe post up somewhere that's kind of hard to be killed like a head glitch area or on the outskirts of the map too that's going to be pretty good and they can pick off enemies that are redeploying the support role this is a player that has a job to destroy vehicles air support that kind of stuff and then finally you can i guess maybe come up with a fourth one which would be a slayer role so this person's main job is to get kills collect as much uranium as possible and yeah just you know get kills pretty much but again you can kind of substitute that out for another objective player but three to four roles is what you kind of want to work with when you're playing fire team dirty bomb i do plan on going into more details about this when the game does officially come out next month so be on the lookout for that and then next up i do see a lot of confusion about this but it's regarding the radiation sickness that occurs if your player gets stuck inside of the radiation zones. Now there are three levels and each level does something different. The first one, weakness, is going to disable all of your perks. The second one, fatigue, is going to reduce the effectiveness of your health regeneration. Lastly, internal bleeding is going to cause damage over time that will eventually lead to your death. Now I wonder if all three of these little hindrances is going to transfer over onto Warzone. That's going to be pretty interesting to see if maybe the gas is going to do something similar to this. Now personally, I don't find it to be too difficult to maneuver around the radiation zones as it does not move very, very fast. And there also are arrows on your minimap that will tell you which direction to head towards to avoid the radiation. And yeah, honestly, this isn't too big of an issue with this version of Fireteam Dirty Bomb. I also recommend using the ping system to mark anything. The ping system is an absolutely amazing way for you to tell your team so, so much information like where the enemies are at. You can also mark self revives, uranium. You can mark the location of tanks, helicopters while you're deploying. And again, I can't stress this enough, always mark enemies as much as possible. And then lastly, I gotta give credit to my buddy Lights Out. Please go check out his links down below. But Fire Team Dirty Bomb is an amazing way to gain weapon XP. I believe he mentioned to me when we were playing earlier that he ranked up one of his weapons to level 17 in a single game. So Fire Team Dirty Bomb seems to be the game mode to play to level up your weapons the fastest and most efficiently because you're going to find so many enemies and teams dropping onto a single location and you can rank up your 
uh, you know, weapons and get a large number of kills this way. So Fireteam Dirty Bomb, amazing way to gain weapon XP. Also, what I would recommend doing is upon loading into the game, press select to bring up the scoreboard and cycle to the larger scale map view because that's going to be a little bit easier to get a full blown map view of all the bomb sites and just really all the action that's going on here. And lastly, too, if you want a really fast way to collect uranium, you can ride any of the vehicles and it's going to collect the uranium that's on the ground. It's going to be safer. You can collect the uranium, get out in time, and maybe go to a different location to deposit your load. So definitely collecting uranium in the vehicles is a very, very good option. As for my weekend thoughts on the game mode, playing this solo, I could definitely see why some people may not find it too appealing because the map is just too large, the game requires too much communication and coordination with your team and itself to really be fully enjoyed at the highest level. But again, if you are trying to level up your weapons, then this is going to be the best game mode to do that. And if you are focusing on that, then you can really help out your team by dropping on top of a building or somewhere around the outskirts of a bomb site and then picking off enemies one by one. All the maps also play really solid in my opinion. Definitely think they will be ported over onto Warzone. And honestly, what we're seeing right now with this game mode this is pretty much what Warzone for Black Ops Cold War is going to end up feeling like to some degree. There are a few issues that I think should be, you know, looked at, one of which is the ping system. I think if you're marking an enemy, then it should keep them marked for a longer duration. The marker also needs to be a bit bigger so it's easier to see as well. Um, I also really would like to see the maps becoming more interactable besides opening and closing doors. For example, on Alpine, I think it would be really, really cool to ride the ski lift across the map. You know, little things like that I think would really make this game mode become something even more special than what it really is. For the tanks, if you're getting shot from above by an attack helicopter, sadly you cannot look up into the sky and try to defend yourself. I think we should have a full range of motion view of all your surroundings from left to right and above when you're inside of a tank. And speaking of the attack helicopters though, that you can manually pilot and shoot rockets out of, those are insanely good. I don't think they need a nerf though, because they don't drop on the map as often, but if you happen to see one appear on your map, definitely try your hardest to get that chopper and it can really help your team out to control a dirty bomb location and it'll do a lot of damage to the teams that are around the area. Also, I think there should be a way for us to collect ammo because some weapons do run out of ammo pretty fast and you're left with only your secondary, which could either be a pistol, a knife, or a launcher. Can't really do too much with that, so hopefully there could maybe be something like an ammo supply and it could drop out of a care package or something along those lines because I run out of ammo extremely fast and then I end up losing my kill streak. So yeah, those are just a couple of gripes that I have with Fire Team Dirty Bomb. Um, I don't really want to go into full, full details because a lot of this stuff probably is going to be changing up until the full release of the game. Um, and honestly though, I really do think this game has a lot of potential because there's so much craziness and hecticness within Call of Duty. Like, this game mode alone really does feel like a arcade shooter that Call of Duty is known for. And I love this game mode a lot for real. Um, but like I said, I'm going to have another video coming out when this game fully releases. Going into more details and tips and stuff like that, definitely don't want to miss out on that. So yeah, thanks so much for watching guys. There's a lot of potential here, but tell me your thoughts about the game mode down below in the comments. Also feel free to come hang out with me in my Discord server, Twitch stream, and over on Twitter. Links can be found down below. I love you guys so, so much. Have a great rest of the day. Till next time, I'll see you guys later.